G'day, this is part two of now a three-part series. <laughs> this week it's uh, Manning Gorge, beautiful, and that's with a little boat where you uh, pop your clothes in the um, little baby boat and then you can either swim over and drag it along or there's a big plastic boat, you can put all your gear in and then you uh, pull the rope across the other side. That's Manning Gorge, awesome. Manny Gorge, then Drysdale Station. Drysdale Station's great because you can set yourself up there and go up to Mitchell Falls, which is exactly what I did. And then exactly Mitchell Falls. Again, pretty rough corrugated road. Uh, but when you get there, it's probably, it is definitely worth it. And uh, I treated myself, did out, went out and did the walk, and then I did a chopper on the way back. Anywho, let's go. I hope I look a little bit exhausted because I am. I've just done the uh, walk of about 45 minutes, so I'll allow for maybe an hour to an hour and a half just to take your time. Because I was walking by myself, I set my own pace and uh, don't know what the hurry is. Oh, I know, the hurry is to get over here before the sun really comes up. So I've left uh, about 5.30, quarter to six in the morning. It was light, I can assure you. And uh, it was a bit of a bit of a challenge, but a great trip thus far. And then go splashing in that water. I arrived here at uh, about just after six o'clock and already the troops are now coming down. There's about uh, half a dozen of us thus far and I'd say in the next hour there'll probably be about 30. Make certain you leave early and make certain you're uh, pretty capable of walking. It's probably I think about two or three kilometres and I'll tell you later on the distance and uh, Make certain you fit and you've got those knees that can bend and everything out of the rocks. Try to keep the effing and jeffing to a minimum. <laughs>
just left Manning Gorge and the road's um, a bit more aggressive, actually quite a lot more aggressive. There's rocks about the size of golf balls, they all look a bit sharp and uh, this might be the point to turn around and say, well maybe I shouldn't go pulling in the caravan. Anywho, uh, I'm committed. I could turn back and I believe that um, uh, well, we'll just suck it and see so to speak. I just passed the 400 kilometres to uh, Wynyard. It's probably not called Wynyard, that's a station in Sydney. But, uh, it starts with W anyway, W-Y. Okay, note to everybody, straight after um, that station I was just at, the road becomes gravel and the, um, the, road, the rocks are a bit bigger and a bit sharper. A little more aggressive, certainly for the first uh, kilometre or so. We'll see how it pans out from that. How many kilometers per day? Uh, well, it depends. It depends on many things. 70 k's a day. 70. Six is 70. I don't want to wreck the shot, but look at this. This was just chance. I met uh, some people who are riding push bikes all around Australia and they pointed me to this. I would say, and they said this, I would say this is probably correct. This could be some of the best Aboriginal art in all of Australia and it's well hidden on the maps and it's also barbed wired to protect it. I have no issue with that. It is outstanding. Okay, first impressions of Mitchell Plateau camping ground. It's uh, quite spacious and uh, not many people here. That might be due to the temperature and due to the fact that we're right near the end of the season. And the end of the season is, um, I believe, around about uh, end of this month, which is September. Could go on, I'm not sure. But right at the moment, very, very hot. There's no reception, uh, but from when I was leaving, um, uh, way back three and a half hours ago, I think it was saying it was between 38 and 42 degrees here. So uh, that's pretty warm. Good morning. I am up at the crack of dawn, um, but unfortunately uh, the helicopter system here, you can book it the night before, but you, they won't let you leave the following morning until seven o'clock when they open up, and then you do all your finalising. Don't understand that, but there's probably a reason for the system. So I'll be leaving just after seven. But if you can, and you're not using the helicopter service, certainly try and leave about 5.30. It's just the light sun's just coming up. Still quite cool, and you can absolutely master that walk. Otherwise, the longer you wait, the more the sun will come up, the hotter it becomes, and the more unbearable and difficult it becomes. And we don't want it to be difficult. So I'm looking forward to the trip. <clears throat> Apparently it's a seven kilometer 
seven to eight kilometre trip there and back. <coughs> but I'm only walking there because I'm getting the chopper back. Woohoo! That'll be fun. Anywho. Yeah, definitely <laughs> do not get here too early. Not on these super hot days because I've just been sweltering. In fact, I've been sitting in the car running the air conditioning for over an hour. Oh, I'm such a wuss. But uh, yeah, the plan would be, it's now coming on five o'clock, we're in September. I would aim to leave, as I said earlier on, leave uh, Drysdale Station around about 12 to one at the latest. Get yourself over here around about five o'clock. The day's cooling down, starting to, sort of the sun's starting to set and there's a breeze and oh, you can just get on with it. So that's a good plan. Well, this is where I'll be tomorrow morning at the crack of. First of all, I'll have to call into the helicopter place and just finalise my uh, weight for baggage, etc., to uh, fly back. And otherwise, I'll be walking along this trail and um, to see how tricky it can be. I'm sure it'll be outstanding. Just behind me, you might be able to see the uh, check in for the um, helicopters. It's not quite like the international airport. Quite a lot of fun. Here we are, paid up, ready to rock. Started the walk at 10 past 7 a.m. And that big canyon was called Big Merton. So apparently I'm 75% of the way there. Been travelling now for about an hour, a few stops. Now if you're doing Mitchell Falls, it's important you uh, listen to this bit because I almost missed it. And I met uh, two or three other couples who totally missed it. So you'll walk up from the car park walk up you walk to a big uh, canyon called Big Merton feels like that's it it's not then you walk uh, a bit further and then you basically come to Mitchell Falls but you're on the side of it so it looks as though oh wow this would have been a great shot if I had been able to get to the other side there with me. you then walk up um, up even further you can have a splash in that first of the Mitchell Falls walk up further and then you'll come to the area here where you can swim in the little pool or the uh, little water area and they've got a series of uh, white poles running through the creek you walk across to where the helicopter is and if you look hard enough you'll see the little yellow tapes indicating from the other side the helicopter area and there's a little area there you can sit on the chairs and wait in the shade however if you follow there's an almost track you can't see the first pole, but if you keep going towards the canyon, you'll get out there and you'll get the money shot, the real shot. So make certain you do that. Get to where the helicopter is and walk east. Hopefully you can see the uh, waterfalls down there. This is the uh, dry season before all the waterfalls get serious. But uh, still really quite majestic, that big one. And then over popped in the corner there, about sort of there where my finger is, is another little tiny one. 
beautiful area. there you have it, it's supposed to be the end, part two of the two part series. It's now part two of a three part series. Sorry about that, but there's way too much action. If you found the video useful, helpful and or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, now is the opportunity. And if you think it's worth sharing, that would be fantastic. Until next time, this is Paul Will Drive, signing off.